In this video, I'm going to make this outline of this antique car. It's got a heavy use of what I call veining, which is to cut lines to give your contours and your and your form for the inner part of the uh, of the of the image. Anyway, this is uh, one of two patterns that's in this old book that I've got, and I. I've always loved old cars. I've been fascinated by them. I've never owned anything this old, but I've owned a few. Uh, don't currently own anything, but uh, wouldn't mind doing it again. Anyway, uh, stay tuned and I'll show you the pattern and how I lined it out and, and we'll cut it and mount it up. Well, this is the beginning of this little project. Uh, most of the patterns that I use are under 11 and a half. They usually fit on a standard sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. Uh, but this pattern is going on 12 inch. Well, it's more than 12 inches. <clears throat> so I, my plywood, I buy the plywood in 12 inch squares. I'm gonna put this on Baltic birch, eighth inch plywood. So I gotta run it catty corner from corner to corner. You can buy a larger plywood, but for my purposes, usually this, this works fine for scroll saw stuff. So anyway, as you can see, the pattern's in two parts. I gotta match it. It come out of two different pages of a book, and I gotta gotta match it up. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tape this, and I'm gonna carefully glue that on. I probably, it's such a large pattern. I probably use spray adhesive. Uh, glue that on, and I gotta drill all these things. Uh, this is a perfect example and a pattern of using a lot of veining, as in a. Uh, blood vein, when I say vein, you can see these lines. All these lines is what gives the texture to the project. Uh, there's, these are all internal cuts, like the wheels and a few other places, but most of it's just veining along with the outline to give you the, the image. So anyway, I'm gonna get this mounted and then we'll uh, drill the holes and then we'll start cutting it. I'm gonna use it on a large enough blade so it'll leave a a good a good line there so it'll be visible. I plan on painting this black and putting it on a, a white background. I've got a couple of pieces here I'm thinking about mounting it on. Uh, I'm not sure an oval or a square or whatever. Anyway, so let me get started mounting that. Okay, I've got my, my little drill set up with a 564 drill bit, and I'm going to drill more cheat a little bit. You got these holes here and here, and then up in here, and I'm gonna drill those. That's about the size they are. I'm gonna drill those with the 564, and I'm gonna switch to 364, and I'm gonna drill all these holes. Those are entry holes, but those lines some they have only at both ends. I'm going to put them there. I'm not sure they're necessary, but I kind of like, I think that kind of gives you a, a little better uh, visual effect. So I'm going to first drill these holes, 
There's one, two, three, four, five, five there's six of them. And, uh, and then I'll switch my uh, drill bit out to a 364 and I'll, I'll drill all the entry holes for the internal cuts and for these veins. Oh, I've got a number five, a number seven blade in the in the saw. You could cut this with a real small blade. It's real easy to cut. But I want a little wider curve, and I'm even going to widen this one a little more. Uh, it's the main outline of the door. One thing I do on a deal like this, you got small holes in comparison to the blade that's in there. This is a number seven. That's a little larger than, than enough for a five. A seven will go through, but it's a tight fit. So what you get oftentimes is the fibers are sticking out. You have trouble getting the blade through it. So what I do is I always have a, several used blades nearby. And I just take that and stick it down from the top. And, and kind of kind of clean it out a little bit to get that blade through. And you don't have to do that on all of them, but every once in a while it doesn't want to go through, so I kind of help it a little bit. And that's always worked for me. You could also take a little bit and kind of take a, a diamond or, or some sort of a sharpening stone and take the corner off that a little bit. I've done that too, but... This so far has worked for me. I just use a use blade to kind of clean the hole out a little bit.
there it's it's cut out I like the way it's turned out I was going to paint this black and put it on a light background but I think I like it better like this I'm going to leave the car natural I'll seal it I got it on this black background actually what that is a piece of cardboard I originally just set that up to so I could see what it looked like but I believe I'm going to mount it on that cardboard and frame it and then I'll seal it I gotta get all the little fuzzies out of it but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on building a frame for that. And we'll see about mounting it on there. Anyway, there I've got the frame made and glued together. I used some scrap 3H uh, walnut that I had in my box. In fact, that was one big square piece. It had something cut out of it. I just cut the corners and stuck them in there. That kind of supports the frame, plus gives me something to put the cardboard against. So I'm going to mount the cardboard in there next, and then I'll see about putting the car on that. And I'll put a hanger of some kind on it. Uh, kind of seal everything. My, my miters came out pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're really good for a quick job like that on a table saw. So anyway, let me get this started mounting here. Uh, thinking about maybe some sort of a tag with a year and make of the car. I'm not sure. I'm going to think about that. But let me get this put together. Well, there's the finished project. I added this little deal. Uh, the actual full name that goes with this in the, the pattern is a 1914 Chevrolet Roadster. But to get that full name in there like that made the font too small, harder to cut. It just wouldn't show up as well. So uh, I just went with that shortened version. I think that gives you the idea that it's a 1914 Chevy. Um, I love these old cars. Don't have anything like that right now. I hope to own another one soon. But anyway, uh, right now, I'm, this is where I am. I'm woodworking. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if you do, hit the like button. 
there's another pattern in there of a Studebaker, an even older one. If you'd like to see that one, well, say so in the comments, and I'll try to put it together and do the same thing. Uh, so if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you in the next video.